They were all Freemasons. Each of these individuals was a member of the Masonic Lodge at the same time they were active in the occult organization which they were identified. The Masonic Lodge is the largest, most powerful, and influential occult secret society in existence now or at any time in recent history. There were two women in the group of occult leaders which I named. Possibly you have heard membership in the Masonic Lodge is only for men. Well, in Europe, they have what is called co-masonry. Helena Petrovna Blavatsky and Annie Besant were both masons in good standing in European lodges. Annie Besant is shown here with other masons. The caption below the photograph identifies her as Brother Annie Besant. Masonry encompasses many groups which have a presence in local communities, both large and small. Men become masons by going through a series of rituals which are known as degrees. The first degrees of masonry, the entered apprentice, the fellow craft, and master mason rituals are conducted in secret in what is known as the Blue Lodge. It is known as a Blue Lodge because the ceiling is painted blue to represent the color of the sky. Sometimes more than one group of masons who constitute a Blue Lodge will use the same building at different times or on different days. This building is used by several Blue Lodges. It also contains office space for the ruling Masonic body, which is known as the Grand Lodge. Other secret Masonic rituals are conducted in the Scottish Rite, the York Rite, and Mystic Shrine. The building shown here is located in Indianapolis, Indiana. It is the home of the largest body of Scottish Rite Masons in the United States. Many Masonic books found in the library of this Scottish Rite Cathedral promote the teachings which were the central theme of the ancient mystery religions. Thousands of men have taken part in occult rituals in this building. The founders of the occult organizations we have described, including the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn and the OTO, and those who led the revivals of witchcraft were all Freemasons. Some of these occult groups continue to encourage their more dedicated disciples to become Masons in order that they might continue to grow in occult knowledge. Bill Schneblin is a case in point. Before accepting Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, Bill was the high priest of several covens of witches. Well, the reason I joined the Lodge is probably a little bit different than, than the reason that I'd probably say 999 out of 1,000 Masons joined the Lodge. I, at the time, I was a witch, and I had, I had probably about two years earlier gotten the high priesthood of witchcraft, and the man that brought me through that was a Grand Master Druid who was also um, a 33rd degree Mason. And he was the first person to suggest that there were really important things in the area of the secret doctrine that could be gained by joining the Masonic Lodge. And then, as a witch, if you understand witchcraft, there's a you start out and you think you're a white witch. Uh, not not a racial term, but just that you're a good witch. And then, as you as you progress, uh, you gradually get revealed to you the fact that there's this dark side of witchcraft, uh, the shadow, the, the dark side of the force, maybe to use a Star Wars term, and uh, that this force can best be accessed through Lucifer. And then very quickly on after that, my teachers, both physical plane teachers and also my, my if you want to say spirit guides, they were actually demons now, I believe, but these people uh, would tell me, if you really want to progress into, into Satanism, uh, which is really essentially the higher, if you want to say, levels of witchcraft, then you need to go and get your Blue Lodge degrees and either take the York Rite or the Scottish Rite. So I joined the Lodge because basically it was suggested to me by witches. And um, when I, of course, they, they do the interview and they come to your home and talk to you and um, they ask me if I believe in, in, in a supreme being and I said yes. And of course the supreme being I believed in was the horned god of witchcraft and and it was no business of theirs i could have believed that the supreme being of the universe was a doorknob as far as masonry is concerned and they wouldn't have cared and so they welcomed me into their fold and uh, basically took me in and initiated me passed me and raised me to the sublime degree of a master mason in about a year and that's that's how i got in 
The History of Freemasonry, written by Masonic scholar Albert Mackey and published by the Masonic History Company, honors Nimrod as a great Mason. Mackey argues that Nimrod deserves the distinction of being called the first Grand Master. The universal sentiment of the Masons of the present day is to confer upon Solomon, King of Israel, the honor of being their first Grand Master. But the legend of the craft had long before, though there was a tradition of the temple extant, bestowed at least by implication that title upon Nimrod, the king of Babylonia and Assyria. A multitude of pagan gods are contained in Masonic literature. The history of Freemasonry, written by Masonic scholar Albert Mackey, contains representations of Ashtaroth, Dagon, Vishnu, Baal, Abraxas, the god of Gnosticism, the god of Mendez, and many others. Speaking of pagan deities, Mackey wrote in the text, they were all characters of human origin in the mythologic ages designed as the saviors of men each one emphatically the representative Christos or Christ of his particular nation and the religious system designed to restore the lost and fallen race of man. Now as Masons we decide not between these but take all in as our brethren and the one God as our Heavenly Father revealed to us as such in the great light of Masonry. There is certainly no shortage of testimonies by Masonic authorities to the relationship of Freemasonry and the mystery religions. Joseph Fort Newton was a 33rd degree Mason who served as past Grand Chaplain of the Grand Lodge of Iowa and past Grand Prelate of the Grand Encampment of Knights Templar of the United States. According to Fort Newton, Masonry is the spiritual descendant of the mysteries. In his book, The Builders, Newton writes, Masonry stands in this tradition, and if we may not say that it is historically related to the great ancient orders, it is their spiritual descendant and renders much the same ministry to our age which the mysteries rendered to the olden world. The connection between Freemasonry and the ancient mystery religions is shown even in the architecture of Masonry. The House of the Temple in Washington, D.C. is a case in point. The focal point of the temple room is a black stone altar. The black stone altar is a significant symbol in witchcraft and Satanism as well as in Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Behind the black stone altar, steps lead to an elevated throne where the Sovereign Grand Commander presides over the occult rituals of the 33rd degree of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Large carvings of intertwined snakes are prominently displayed on both sides of the throne. Since the Garden of Eden, the symbol of the snake has been universally recognized as a representation of Satan. Snakes are displayed even on the exterior of the building above the main entrance. The literature of Freemasonry is rich with occult symbolism. Surprisingly, some Masonic literature contains instructions on conjuring demons and some is so blatant as to openly discuss human sacrifice. A case in point is the secret teachings of all ages by Manley Palmer Hall. Hall's book is recommended in books such as A Bridge to Light, which are published under the authority of the Supreme Council of the 33rd degree of Scottish Rite Freemasonry. Others who are in a position to recognize the elements of Satanism have also noticed the similarities between Satanism and Freemasonry. Anton Sandar LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan and the author of the Satanic Bible, also wrote a book entitled The Satanic Rituals. The Satanic Rituals describes in detail the rites of Lucifer. LaVey describes the Luciferian ritual known as the Ceremony of the Stifling Air. He notes that a slightly altered version of it is embodied in the ritual of the ancient Arabic order, Nobles of the Mystic Shrine, another Masonic organization. He writes, 
The original Templar's right of the fifth degree symbolically guided the candidate through the devil's path.